and welcome back from the holidays. I'm Rachel, and this is Slice of Life. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a cheesecake, but first, let's start with candying these citrus peels. I'll be decorating with these dark chocolate, mandarin, mint, and some pomegranates our friend Nader gave us. California produce always seems to provide, even in winter. All right, so what am I doing here? This peeler worked really well for the lemons, but it's not doing anything for the mandarins. The skin's really thin, so I'm gonna have to peel it by hand and then slice it with a knife. I'm just gonna remove all the rough edges and make these really straight so it looks like it was done with a peeler, but you know, it's all a lie. So now that I've made my first slice, I'll compare it to a piece of the lemon to make sure they're uniform. Not only for aesthetic purposes, but also to make sure everything cooks evenly. Now we must sacrifice two mandarin segments to the gods of cooking. Mmm, delicious. Get a pot of water going at a rolling boil and add all of the peel. We're just removing some of the bitterness, so only leave it in here for about 10 minutes. I've never been a huge fan of candied citrus peel, but after making it at home, I think my mind's been changed. All right, let's go fishing. There's a huge amount of patience that comes along with being a baker that I don't have. And as you can see here, I'm already losing my patience with fishing these out. So I'm just gonna dump this out in the sink and pour the rest of it on the cutting board. <laughs> I really can't guarantee how much baking content you're gonna see from me in the future because of this reason. <laughs> Okay, so now that we have it out, I'm gonna blot it dry and you can let it sit for probably about 15 minutes before we go into the next phase of cooking this. You know, humans have been preserving fruit like this since the 14th century for a time frame that's like Mongol Empire Black Death old. And here I am in my tiny house on my shitty electric stove doing this for YouTube with royalty free music playing in the background. Humanity's a trip. Okay, phase two. Let's throw in a cup of water and a cup of sugar. I know this is the liquid measuring cup, don't come at me. It's fine, we don't have to be super precise here. Let's give it some stirs to incorporate and we're gonna bring this to a light boil. Now that we've gotten to this stage, let's add all the peel back in and we'll do another 10 minutes in this boil. By this point, the peel should have a translucent gem-like quality to it. I would recommend drying it out on a fine wire rack, however, I didn't have one, so I'm just using a paper towel here. I'm 
I'm gonna spread this out and let it rest for at least an hour before I do anything else to it. As I said before, I am not a baker, so this recipe came off of King Arthur Flowers' website. I'll list my ingredients up on the screen. I did make a few adjustments, but nothing too crazy. This was essentially just an excuse to pull out my Vitamix. I really didn't want to incorporate this by hand, so here you go. Quick and easy way of doing that. I'm going to be adding all of my dry ingredients in here, and then I'll add the butter to it in a bowl. I'm going to give you a demonstration of one of the most wonderful machines that was ever invented, the Vitamix machine, and I'm going to talk to you on the most vital subject that concerns you and your family, and that is health. With health, we have wealth. We're the richest person on earth. Without health, you're a miserable failure. Uh, if he could only see us now, with his machine whirring away at a cake that could probably make you gain 20 pounds in one sitting. In all seriousness, though, that was the first infomercial ever that you just watched. Like, ever, ever. So thank you, Vitamix, for pioneering the way for all of our late-night commercial entertainment over the years. I'm going to make a small well in our graham cracker sugar mixture and pour in the butter. Mix together everything until it's an even consistency. Keep on folding until you get all those dry bits hydrated. Time to pack in the crust. You can have it go up the sides if you like, but I generally prefer my cheesecake to be dusted with chocolate on the outside, which is what I'll be doing later. Just pack it in with your fingers and try to make it as even as possible. This is a 9 inch spring form pan which is really convenient for cheesecakes because it just pops off the sides. I recommend investing in one or borrowing one from your mom like I did. This cheesecake really is the epitome of 2020. Most of the ingredients were gifted or left over and most of the things I'm using to cook it are not mine. Stay thrifty my friends. So again, I am not a baker. I won't have a lot of tips for you on this, but if there's one thing I do know, use room temperature cream cheese and use room temperature eggs. This is super important, otherwise it won't incorporate and it'll taste like poop. Actually, it'll probably taste fine, it just might look like poop. As you can see here, I'm just starting with the cream cheese and sugar and mixing until smooth. Egg time. If you're afraid of getting shell in your cream cheese, you can always crack these into a separate container before you dump them in. 
but I like living dangerously. And now vanilla. I didn't actually measure this, but it was the bottom of the container. It was anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon, but I don't really care about measuring things. Again, I'm not a baker. And again, incorporate until it's as smooth as possible. You want it to be silky and consistent without any bumps or lumps. It was also around this time that I started preheating my oven at 350 degrees. Speaking as future Rachel who's already tried this cheesecake, I may do this again with lemon juice and maybe lavender. I don't know, something a little bit more light and refreshing than vanilla. Many thanks to Russ for always being my taste tester, but also getting this shot. I'm just smoothing out the mix and working it around. I actually found it more useful to just tap the pan on a hard surface and it leveled out everything pretty easily. Now I know a lot of you are going to be screaming about water baths and I actually had my own doubts at first but it turned out great. There really isn't a lot of filling to crust on this. Uh, you could double this recipe really easily and then I would use a water bath but as is I'm just going to throw it in here for 30 minutes and let it cool. And while all that baking's going on let's take a look at this candied peel. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of sugar and toss it around so it sticks and we should be ready to go. Now you can see the reason why I put it on the sheet tray. It's so much easier to grab and pull in and out of the oven. Now we just need to let it cool so we can decorate. I dusted the outer edges with dark chocolate shavings and garnished with our remaining fruit and mint leaves. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe for more cooking videos.